see how clumsy I am in the blooper reel that always happens at the end because I will inevitably make mistakes and things will fall over. Hello my friends and welcome back to Player Display, a very brand new sparkly clean action review channel for the seven or eight people who ever see it online. So of course we recently reviewed Migs Mayfeld. With him also came in the mail yesterday Axe Wolves, who finally completes our trinity of Wan Kree's from season two of The Mandalorian. And he is definitely the least exciting of the three uh, for a variety of reasons. Of course, if you've seen the show, you know that you've only seen this guy for maybe five seconds? He wasn't around very long. All that being said, he's still a very cool figure. Um, overall, he's pretty much reuse. So, anyways, let's get in into the box to start. Um, by the way, I will not always have the box on me. I'm probably just going to be reviewing whatever figures I feel like reviewing. That won't necessarily mean I already have the boxes with me or any longer. Usually my boxes don't survive, as I think I've said before, but I have his box right here. So again, this is from The Last Waves with the heralded uh, plastic window, which I don't actually have in there right now. It's kind of elsewhere. <laughs> um, oh yeah, let's go ahead and zoom out. There you go, you can see it a little bit better. And then our fun little doorknob over there, our best friend for our review sessions here. <laughs> we got Axe Woves over here. I can't say the likeness is good or not because we didn't actually see his face for much of the show to begin with. But it looks good. I mean, looks clean. It looks like a person. No Uncanny Valley going on. And the portrait continues to the back, as we expect. Then you have your multilingual bios. We're going to attempt to focus it again. That should be good enough. Nothing on the side. Uh, the top, you get a little window here so light can shine down if you're a mint in box collector, which obviously I am not. And that's pretty much it for the box. Let's get that out of the way and have a look at the figure. Um, obviously, he is not with his accessories at the moment. I feel like we should just look at these figures with their bare necessities first, and then we can go into whatever helmets or blasters or lightsabers that they have, or web slingers or batarangs. We're going to cover all all genres here, so we're gonna have some fun. But anyways, here is Axe Wolves. We'll, again, start from head to toe, and the face looks good. I mean, again, as I said, we didn't see his face much, so I can't say we have a very good image of what he looked like to reference off of. It, at least that's for me. He could be the most famous actor out there, and I just don't recognize him, but the face looks good. Again, it's Kind of shiny as a result of the photo, the photo reel technology that Hasbro has been implementing, which more often than not has been really excellent to look at. And here it is definitely a good example of that. Um, kind of like Migs Mayfeld, you continue the theme of the five o'clock shadow, which also came across very well. The eyes are do done very well. The eyebrows also look okay. As for the hair, no real texturing or anything paint-wise, I mean, but that's fine. It also has a really nice sculpt work on it and a nice, very dark brown, borderline black. Not quite there, though. Um, but yeah, head looks very good. As for the body, it's not too exciting because we have seen this already with the Death Watch Mandalorian, which is kind of ironic since this is a Clan Kree's Mandalorian, so even though they're rivals, they wear the same outfits. If you wear the same outfits on the streets, how are you going to know whether to shoot each other or not? Pretty screen accurate, as far as I know. Um, the torso, you got your classic Mandalorian segmented chest plate with the heart of Mandalore, as I believe that centerpiece is called there. And it's nice that he's got some weathering going on, he's got some scuffs, he's got some dents, and it really does help to add to the overall battle-worn aesthetic of the figure. They could definitely take it further in a few places with their figures overall, maybe throw some more dirt on their figures, some mud, some sand, um, you know, just to add a storytelling element, you know, like as a customizer, I greatly value that, and it would be nice if they came out of the box like that, but then again, us customizers wouldn't have a whole lot to do, so maybe that's a good thing that they uh, don't do what we want them to do in a strange way. But going to the sides of the arms here, again, it's pretty conventional Mandalorian gear. You've got the shoulder pads, you have some really nice gauntlets going on. This is a different gauntlet than what you see on 
the Return of the Jedi Deluxe Boba Fett, who I do have. Uh, so, unfortunately, he doesn't have a flamethrower, but you don't see him use it in the movie, I mean, the show anyways, so that's not a big deal. The other one, it's a different sculpt, I believe. Yeah, definitely a different sculpt, because this one has a little pad there for the jetpack, which we'll get into later. And this one has uh, not much going on at all. I think it's like for uh, saber darts and whatnot. On the back, um, it's kind of just tunic and then a few little shoulder accents there. Other than that, not a whole lot to talk about. And then you can sort of see the body glove that continues from under it. I really do love when Black Series figures utilize sort of an overcoat piece that's kind of floating a little bit, and that really allows for not just a seamless sculpt kind of illusion, whatever, but also it doesn't hinder articulation as much as if it were just part of the raw sculpt that is the basic figure underneath, so that's very good. Uh, moving on to the belt, it looks good. Uh, you got the silver buckle right there. You got a few pouches. A very minor thing that I wish Hasbro would take the care to do is when you have pouches like that with a little tiny button, just do a little dot of silver. Really easy. Adds a little bit of flair to the figure. So I feel like that's something that they could definitely do. And then to the side, you got your classic holster right there. Of course, there's a vacancy at the moment. We will get to accessories a little bit later. On the back, you kind of got an extra armor, pe armor piece there. And then you've got that Han Solo kind of uh, strap to continue with that holster. And going down to the legs, you get the usual, again, Mandalorian armor. They kind of wear the same thing. But... I really do like the colors of this guy that helps to distinguish him from the Death Watch Mando. Uh, you've got some nice black continuing on, and then you got some blue knees, which I really like. I love that stark contrast between, um, it's not really a black, it's just a very dark gray, but then you get to this stark blue. It, it's actually looking more blue on camera than it does in real life for whatever reason, but it looks nice. It, I love the color scheme of this guy. Um... Here's another place where I could point out somewhere where just a dash of silver would be nice. You got the little dart shooters right there, which I personally am a little bit nostalgic for because I'm one of many children who grew up with those Star Wars encyclopedias or whatever. And whenever they got to the Boba Fett section, they always pointed out, oh, and his knees, those are weapons too. So you know that he's such this Swiss army knife of a badass. So naturally, when he actually did use the knee joints in, I mean, the knee darts or whatever the hell in Mandalorian Season 2, I'm talking to Boba, Boba Fett, not Axe Wolves, who didn't do anything, that was really cool. So, I don't know, just painting those little bits of silver would be really nice to enhance the flavor a little bit. So, oh well, perhaps another day. Uh, moving on to the boots, um, not too exciting, but... I mean, their boots, they look good, and then more silver opportunity there, but, uh, yeah, so the figure on its own without accessories is pretty solid, it's exactly what you'd expect, no real surprises, have a look at the accessories, so he comes with three, which is pretty good for a non-deluxe release, um, first we have his helmet, and this is probably where you'll notice a very obvious problem with this figure that we've seen before, and that is warping this helmet is a little bit squeezed and that's probably just a result of the way it was packed but i wish they'd give it a little bit more room so it wouldn't get this squished up you could see that the silver motif continues on with the weathering the scratching and all that the rangefinder is articulated which is fantastic i always love to have that especially when they're focusing down the sights of their blaster so that's really good something that makes this helmet unique is there's this sort of painted ring going around the top dome a little bit so helps him to stand out a little bit more from the rest um makes him a little bit more distinct on the back you got that classic little t-shape going on nothing on going on on the inside there's no um additional mold to make it more form-fitting to his head so it kind of just rests there but it's it's fine and then actually i'll show you right now and yeah it fits fine but as you can see, it's a little bit doughy. When we do some size comparisons, you'll see that this helmet is definitely supposed to be wider. And 
it's all there. It's just you need to heat it up. It'll expand. It's not going to be a problem. Uh, the reason why I review it as it is now is because I wanted to show you what you're expecting when you open the figure out of the box. And unfortunately, the helmet is going to be something you may or may not have to struggle with. So, And unfortunately, the same goes for the knee pads, which are also a little bit weird. I think this one was okay, but... On the right one, you can see it's a little bit slanted. It's kind of going up. Like, literally, when I took it out of the box, I felt like I had to click plastic. Like, it was almost stuck to the knee joint a little bit. I don't know if that was paint or whatever. But, yeah, it's definitely a little bit warped. But, again, just Hasbro, pack these figures a little bit more lightly and we won't have these problems anymore. Um... That actually might be a benefit to the uh, green plasticless packaging that we're getting now, which is oh so controversial, but we'll talk about that another time when I actually have that in hand. But the benefit that might come from that paper packaging is we will no longer have to worry about plastic crushing more plastic. So with that bubble gone, that will allow really nice sculpt work like this to expand and come out of the box in its full shape. So that'll be really nice. But I suspect with the helmet off, you see if we could squeeze the lower part a little bit, you see how it widens up and it's more Boba Fett. Yeah, that's pretty much what we're wanting from this guy. Moving on with accessories, we have, again, a Mando staple, the jetpack, which um, is a Mando jetpack. Not a whole lot to explain here. Um, you've got your usual three-pack system, which has been around since the original Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett. Um, the bottom, for those who are wondering, he does have the rocket ports, if anyone would like to install the fire effects from the Deluxe Return of the Jedi Boba Fett, or also the Dark Troopers. I tested that, and the pegs are different, but they do still fit. In fact, I have them right here, and I can show them to you. So, this is the Dark Trooper effect plug it in and it stays just fine like there's no distinct click or anything but it does work they say in fine they're not sliding out and of course each thruster i suppose is jointed they swivel up and down they're not too straight they kind of bend inward when you push them up but when you throw them on his back he looks pretty good slot that on three pegs no problem a little shake test, yeah, it's fine. And then when you give, give him a figure stand, you shouldn't have a problem there either. Let's be sure he doesn't tip over. We don't need another MIGS incident again. But uh, yeah, so that's his jetpack. And then lastly, his most boring accessory, because pretty much all of them come with it, is you get the blaster. So uh, pretty standard. You know, it's, it is pretty cool that this design is pulled straight from the Clone Wars show, and then it was integrated into live action. So I really appreciated that. It's um, a very good sculpt. It just gets boring to see it so many times. Like, you know, you can only see so many E-11s before it loses its charm. Uh, that being said, I don't actually know what the particular name of this blaster is, but this one's really nice. It's kind of that same gray that we have on his armor motif and then you've got a silver grip and finger guard it looks like so that's pretty good if it's in the hand no issue so obviously he's a righty as most black series figures are for whatever reason um the only lefty figure i can think of is perhaps Darth Maul? I think he wields with his left hand i could be wrong about that but yeah once you get all the gear on and Obviously, if you have the same problem as I did, and the helmet and the knees are a little bit wonky just from warping, then heat them up, uh, set everything into place, and he looks good. He looks like a solid Mandalorian for your shelf. So that's pretty much his accessories. Now let's go over articulation, although it's kind of boring because, again, we've seen this already. With the helmet on, it doesn't actually interfere with articulation whatsoever because, again, it's a pretty floaty piece, so you can do whatever you want. He goes pretty far back so you can get him definitely in those flying poses not totally 90 degrees although you'd probably break his neck at that point so maybe that's a good thing uh goes all the way down pretty much then you got a good amount side to side so head articulation is great and that is thanks to the newly integrated dumbbell neck and then the ball at the bottom of that so it looks very good no butterflies at the shoulders but of course you got your up got your down 
you got your spin around, and then the shoulders are part of that new system where they're kind of hooked to the back of the arm peg, which I really like. And then, oh, there goes the thruster. Let's just put those aside. Those are a distraction. And then over here, you got your single elbow joints. Uh, this one comes up to, I think, a little bit past 90. And I think the same goes for this one over here. Actually, yeah, they're both pretty much the same. So that looks good. I think both of the wrists are... Uh, again, I don't know if this is up or down or side to side, but it's the hand you want for a figure with a gun. Uh, oh, this one actually is not that joint there. This is the... It's the other type of joint. I don't know which one's which, but... Yeah, not a big deal. Again, he's just wielding a pistol anyhow. Um, and of course, if you want to give him a rifle, then that's where this hand will, well, come in handy. I can't believe I just said that. Moving on to the torso, again, this is where the floating piece, in my view, is very valuable. You get a lot going... No, you don't. Never mind, I retract that statement. But you get a little bit of down, but you get a good amount back. So again, that'll help with the jetpack... Uh, posings if you want to get him suspended in the air and you've got calf swivels on both legs of course they kick out a fair amount uh both the same amount the holster doesn't hinder it whatsoever seemingly and then you've got single knees uh just past 90 and you got the ankles here i have actually haven't tested out the ankles yet they go about there yeah not much further than that and yeah, nothing at all going up, which is kind of unfortunate considering what we saw with MIGs just before, so that's really weird. Uh, but the rocker is excellent and very contortion-y. That's really it for the figure on its own, so let's do some comparison. So, obviously, the first one we need to look at is the Death Watch Mandalorian, and of course, these are pretty much the same sculpt. Uh, different gear. This guy comes with a big old rifle. I actually have two of these. By the way, a lot of my Mandalorians have panel lining on them from Gundam markers, so if they look a little bit more gritty or grimy in certain spots, that's probably why. But I really adore this figure. I definitely like it more than the Axe Wolves, but again, when I heat up the helmet, maybe that'll change my view on it. But you can see, when we put up the heads close, this helmet is definitely way too squished. But they stand at, I think, the same height? Hold on, Axe is a little bit spread out there. Uh, they're close. I, that might be a matter of Axe's head sculpt. Of course, the helmet goes all the way down to his hair. We're on the Mandalorian over here. I think there's an extra mold piece inside of the helmet to compensate for what is probably a base clone head. I also forgot to mention that you got the same holster system where you get, it pegs out, you slide the blaster in. Um, hell, I'll show you that again. It's boring, but just so I can... I'm a completionist, so just to get that out of the way. But yeah, pull that up, slot that in, hoping that stays up, and then that goes in. No problem. I guess the one thing I can say where mechanically the um, Axe Wolves is mechanically superior to the Death Watch Commando, Mandalorian, whatever you want to call them, is the jetpack. The jetpacks are the same, but you'll notice here that the thrusters on the Death Watch Mando are stuck on both of mine. Again, I have two of this figure, and they're I don't know why, they just won't move anywhere. I've applied heat, I've tried water, uh, they don't want to go, which kind of stinks, but that's all right. They'd probably be uh, my ground units, I suppose. Actually, you won't want to see Axe Wolves complete the trinity that is Clan Krees. I wonder how many more of them there are. We've only seen three. But, of course, you have Bogatan Krees, who the entire clan is named after, and she looks very good. And then you've got Cosca Reeves over there, and they are both definitely the highlights of this group. But Axe Wolves provides a little extra muscle, I suppose. Yeah, the females are pretty much the same height, and Axe is just a hair taller, which makes perfect sense. So that's all well and good. Then we have the Mandalorian, of course. Again, this is the Bandai kit. Um, heavily, heavily weathered. Um, he is taller than Axe Wolves, apparently. Although that might be on behalf of some drop-down joints in the legs. No, they're already... Um, up there. So yeah, he's just a little bit on the tall side. That's okay. Then we've got a uh, book of Boba Fett or Mandalorian season two. Uh, well, Boba Fett there. 
Then for another female, we got Fennec Shand, who is very, very tiny, actually. Speaking of tiny, I also have Bill Burr once again. We'll bring him in. I actually wanted to compare him beside Fennec Shand because I noticed in the last review he was quite short. And yeah, apparently he is. Is that on behalf of an ab crunch? Is it the ankles? No, he's just a... He's just a little guy, apparently. <laughs> now we have some Death Watch Mandalorians. Uh, this time with names, we have Paz Vizla, or the Heavy Mandalorian, as he was called on the packaging. Um, naturally, he dwarfs him. He's in, even here, he's crouched, so he's a big dude. And then you've got the Armor, who I totally forgot to bring in to the last review, and she's a little bit on the shorter side, so they'd all technically be enemies to him because they're of opposing clans. I really hope in Season 3 we see Death Watch and Clan Krees meet up and either fight each other or become allies. We got my Spider-Man again, but again, Ben Riley head, and then Renew Your Vow's Body there, just my definitive Spider-Man. It's also a good baseline for what a 6-inch action figure is, so... Yeah, Axe Wolves is still, um, I guess he is meant to be a little bit shorter. And then over here, we've got a NECA Predator, just for the heck of it. And obviously, he's 7 inch scale, so he's going to be a lot bigger. But if you want to get a really big guy over here, I have the McFarlane King Shark with custom pants. And yeah, this definitely does not work. For the little guys, we've got Baby Yoda, who's... Um, yeah, he can't even be bothered to look at us, apparently. And then we've got Muck Muck, because everybody loves Muck Muck. He's my profile image. Of course you have to like Muck Muck. So, that is it for Axe Wolves. A very solid figure. Um, unfortunately, because it's no fault of the figure, really, but he is exactly the same as the Death Watch Mandalorian, which I seriously love as soon as I took that one out of the box. And there isn't a whole lot you can do with this guy. I mean, again, he's got the unique head sculpt, which is cool. But again, that's a face that we rarely ever see anyhow. You want Axe Wolves? This is Axe Wolves. Um, perfectly fine figure, just no real thrills. Again, the only issues are the warping when it comes to the plastics um, for the helmet and the knees. But again, those are easy fixes. That concludes this review. I have basically nothing else to say. Again, I'll just be reviewing things as I feel like reviewing them. There's no agenda. This is just for fun and, uh, you know, relax, stretch out, play with some plastic. Yeah, that's about all. So thanks very much for watching and I will see you all later. That is it for Axe Wolves. You gotta wonder how they come up with these Mandalorian names. Like, they play a game of, what was it, Boggle or Yahtzee, where they shake the letters together. And you're like, hey, that sounds kind of cool in Star Wars-y. Let's uh, attribute that to this character or something like that. If the camera will focus, um, you can use your imagination too. There we go. All right, that's a sweet spot. No, it's not. There it is again. All right, so, and I literally, my camera setup is literally a phone on top of a cardboard box, and the phone is being stood up by a snack clip. Hey, hell, we're, we're at the end. I'll show you. This is what's holding up my camera, my phone. That's how sad this setup is. So that's a good thing. Jetpack fell off. I've learned nothing from MIGs, obviously. So that's very good. And the jetpack fell off again. Sometimes I'm just tempted to glue these back pieces in <laughs> and then put them beside the Mandalorians. Fennec will stand back up on her own. Uh... Yeah, he's just taking out everyone. It's probably because of the five blasters he has.